Kevin Durant recently got pulled from the Brooklyn Nets versus the Toronto Raptors game. And it has us scratching our heads. And I'm just going to be very frank. Initially, when I saw Kevin Durant playing and then they took him out of the game, the first thought that came to my head was, oh shit, he just tore something in his Achilles again. Or it's, it's something more deeper than what they're letting us on and they're just using COVID as the excuse as to the reason why they're, they're pulling him. But then, you know, thank goodness that wasn't the case at all. And essentially what happened was Kevin Durant, one of Kevin Durant's friends or associates that was around him had an inconclusive test. When he got the inconclusive test, the NBA said, well, okay, we'll, we'll allow him to play the game. And it, uh, but he has to come off the bench. He had another test. They did a rapid COVID test and it came back positive for coronavirus. And they had to pull KD from the game because he was a risk to everybody that he's playing with. And this really bothers me because this is Kevin Durant's livelihood. And he can't necessarily have friends that take this shit so um, lackadaisical to the point where they're willing to encroach on KD with the virus and, you know, Shut, basically, that could shut down the NBA if you really think about it. Because Kevin Durant was in the locker room with his cohorts, his colleagues. He was with the assistant coaching staff. The Toronto Rap, they, they played the Toronto Raptors. He played against all those players. Those players, they could potentially carry the virus to their uh, coaching staff and things of that nature. And then think about this. James Harden's entourage, Ky Kyrie Irving's entourage. Fred Van Fleet's entourage, Kyle Lowry's entourage, all those people could take take that virus from New York and spread it and spread it and spread it. And this is how es essential it is to understand how deadly the, and the exposure to the virus is. It's like it multiplies tenfold. One person could affect 10, which could affect 100, which could affect 1,000, which could affect 10,000. And it just goes on and on and on and on, the force multiplier. So... I don't, and it, you know, you don't want to tell people how to live their lives, but with all this money on the line, it, it's just tough to not say to somebody like, "Look, dog, we we can link up another time," or you know, unless it's like his mother or his brother or something like that. You know, it, is it that is it that key? Is it that serious for him to have that that person around him, or whatever? And you know, the answer for him might very well be yes. But the NBA also had a sense of gross negligence in this in this case because. Look, if this shuts the season down, if this is your fault, Adam Silver, uh, executives, because you're saying that inconclusive tests, it's inconclusive, so play the game. But he's played the game for like 10, 12, 15, whatever minutes he played. That could tear down everything because guys are not around other guys. Toronto might already have traveled. They could have spread it. You know, it, it just... It's just a bad look on the NBA. Like, the NBA really should treat inconclusive tests like positive tests until they get a negative because Kevin Durant was in the locker room talking to James Harden. So, like, what if James Harden, Kyrie Irving, if they get the coronavirus, that Nets, that that billion-dollar business is going to take a hit because now you got to reschedule games. So, it, it, and this is the problem with the league and just everywhere. Greed supersedes all. Right? So you would think like, all right, KD and his friend, they had a, a positive test, whatever the case is. We'll, 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 his friend had an inconclusive test, now it's positive, or inconclusive test. We don't know it's positive yet. They were waiting. You would think they'll say, well, sit, KD, sit out this game. Because this could potentially have the effect of spreading the virus to other players and really harming us for the long haul. You know, they're not even thinking long term. Even when you look at the NBA, they're trying to create uh, or trying to have an all-star game where they promised that they wouldn't. This Kevin Durant situation is a key indicator of what can happen if you do the all-star game. Guys that are around their friends and family that have inconclusive tests, you let them play and then halfway through they only had a positive test, now that play is positive. You know what I'm saying? So this is really bad. This is a black eye on the NBA and the coronavirus uh, policy and they they like to champion the fact that they haven't had a positive test since X amount of days and stuff like that. This is bad, guys. 
because they're letting the dollars and cents supersede their overall business. You might lose, all right, I feel you, like you might lose a million dollars or, or four, five, six, seven million dollars if Kevin Durant doesn't play one night, right? But now, because you allowed him to play, you're losing 30, 40 million dollars because now you got to reschedule all these games. So, you know, hindsight is 2020, but the NBA really has to understand if people are coming back with inconclusive tests, the players shouldn't be able to allow to play until you get a conclusive test. You have to be conclusive because you're affecting locker rooms, you're affecting travel, you're affecting other people like workers and stuff like that. So this is not a good look on the NBA. And I can understand Kevin Durant's frustration. You said he couldn't play. Then you said he can't play. Now you saying he gotta get, uh, make up your mind. Who's Junction, who's me super? Like, comment, subscribe.